This week we're on to week two of our painting vacation series and we're going to be visiting the southern Portugal coast, Portuguese coast, Algarve, as a motif and as a subject for discussion or thought we're going to talk about tonal values or lights and darks and how the artist learns to first of all look at the subject in terms of lights and darks, simplify the subject based on lights and darks and then use that as a means of communicating and, and rendering the subject for effect. This uh, does uh, extend the idea that we talked about last week with composition uh, and uh, particularly center of interest lights and darks are very useful for leading the eye in the painting. What you see here is a grayscale, nine iterations uh, going from light to dark, a single color. It's a good practice, it's a good drill, and uh, I recommend it before, um, well, as you, as you begin to paint, it's not a bad warm-up. Uh, this is the scene that we're going to be doing today. Uh, strong con tonal contrast, especially through the um, middle of the painting. You can see two areas where there, we see through this large rock to the ocean behind, the sky behind. This has a strong draw, primarily because of tonal contrasts. And that's how I start um, my approach into the image, is using a single color and thinking about how to use lights and darks. There's a, several benefits. One of the main benefits to the watercolorist is that we <clears throat> can translate this idea of lights and darks, darks into paint consistency. In other words, for using lighter colors, we adding more water. Uh, we, we dilute our colors and we get a weaker rendition. And uh, this equates to a light tone. As we lessen the water, in other words, the paint becomes thicker, drier, the tone itself, the darkness itself becomes darker and darker. And I'm starting with the light areas of this painting, the light areas of this motif, uh, that pure blue in the background. Uh, I'm trying to create a, a bit of a wash in the sky, a graded wash. This is another technique that I'm gonna be referring to a, light, a lot today because uh, we use the graded wash a lot, going from a light to a dark aspect of a single color or from a uh, one color to another color um, in essence, the wash transitions over the length of the wash. So I use that a bit in the sky behind to go from a darker blue on top to a paler blue on the horizon. In the first go at the water, I went from the, that same lighter blue as it approached the rock to a deeper blue as it came down. And I'm building on that concept while introducing uh, this cadmium orange, this warm color into the still wet wash. So there's a there's a couple of transitions going on, but um, they're all extensions of a very simple idea called a graded wash, changing the wash over its course. It's a it's a primary technique for watercolor, something that we use a lot, a lot, and we count on the wet state of the watercolor to help us blend this and make the transition very smooth. Uh, the wet nature of the paper, also a bit of tilt in the board. There's a bit of angle to my board, which you can't see. It's about 30 degrees. The gravity then helps this wash to blend a little bit. So there's a, a second uh, tutorial that I have that focuses just, just on the graded wash and how to do it and um, I would recommend looking at that in addition to watching this demonstration of painting um, Algarve. So the painting's advanced and going from, I'm basically working from light to dark. The sky is dried. I'm going into the face of this big rock that forms the, the dramatic uh, presentation of the these coastal rock formations and we're looking at it against the sun so it's quite dark but I'm starting with a very strong orange and if you're 
using orange, you can go so strong. What I mean by that is you can only get so dark with the orange. We have to affect that with adding other colors, which we'll do. Yes, we'll do. Here we go. We're adding a, some neutral tint and ultramarine blue, or cobalt blue, I'm sorry, to this uh, still wet uh, cadmium orange. And again, you can tell how gravity's starting to pull down that color a little bit. I'm going to help it with um, a little weaker version of that same color. And uh, the hope here is that we get a glow uh, from the underpainting of orange uh, to, to make this whole inner kind of inner area reflections and uh, the face of the rock. We want it to glow with the underpainting of the orange as a result. I'm going uh, dark to light, top to bottom, uh, which may be a little hard to perceive, but I'm conscious of diluting the color as I come down. So you'll see that more as it dries, that that lower section becomes lighter and lighter, whereas the upper section remains rather dark. Again, for the watercolorist, it's a, it's a useful tool because our technique is... Uh, kind of driven by this idea of paint consistency. How thick is the paint? How thin is the paint? And to have a, a knowledge of that, a physical knowledge of that, and be able to use it with a variety of colors, I would say is at the heart of painting with watercolors. Certainly it opens a lot of doors and makes uh, representing, representing different motifs and moods and things like this much easier easier, much more direct. And uh, so I'm finishing up the right hand side with some dry brush, extending that dark that I applied in the face in front of us to the right hand side via some dry brush using the texture of the paper to evoke the texture of the rock. Um, one of the things that uh, we do now is we go back in with a little dry brush to, <clears throat> again, add some texture to the upper part of the rock. Uh, the stri striations, the strata of the rock as it's sort of been eroding away is revealed and presents another opportunity for building on this idea of a graded wash through some dry brush at the top. And what this does is it creates luminosity. The, the end effect is that we have a feeling of light bounce as though light is bouncing off the water back up into the rock. And this is, um, this, it carries a feeling of luminosity or bouncing light. And that was very much uh, felt in the photograph that we started with. And it's starting to come out as a result of the use of graded washes. So in this particular painting, I've used a graded wash in the sky, in the water, and in that rock face that's uh, facing us. So you can see, I hope you can see that there's a, I put a great deal of importance on that graded wash and working from light to dark uh, to affect, to create an effect, to create an effect of light bounce in this particular painting. Tonal values also help to keep us out of trouble. Uh, I've seen this scenario happen again and again, where a student has done a, a wonderful painting, say a bouquet of roses, and uh, the roses look fantastic. The, they have a bright red, uh, followed by green stems, etc., etc. Then a background is added, and suddenly the roses, that beauty that was there, is lost. And I'm not saying it's the background's fault, but what the student has done is added a tone that was close to the roses. It could have been a different color, but that has kind of defeated the beauty that was there in the roses, and now we can't see them in the same way. So that's a simple story to, to dramatize how uh, important tonal values are, not just from an understanding of light and dark, but how they can keep us out of trouble, how they can create dr drama, how they can drive this idea of center of interest. For example, now we see a, a strong pull towards those two 
bright areas in the painting, and that's created in large part by the surrounding darks. Uh, there's a similar draw to the right-hand side. There's a similar draw to the top part of the rock as well. So there's some competing areas in this painting that make it um, perhaps not as finished as we would like, or not as, uh, what do I want to say, focused. Uh, my eye is bouncing around a little bit when I would like it to be more towards those two uh, portals looking out. We'll try some adjustments at the end and see if we can resolve that. But in the meantime, I'm finishing off the very dark application. Uh, this paint is almost like butter in terms of its consistency. Almost no water has been added. And I'm putting uh, silhouettes of stones to help describe the water surface, to push back against that rock formation, and uh, finish the painting with some very strong darks. And that's, uh, be the paint again is being used quite thickly. If we look at our painting, we realize some places very thin, the mid-tones, the paint consistency was um, mu uh, much less water, but not quite as thick as what I'm using now. And then to finish the painting, I'm using paint that's very dry, very thick, and will not change. It will not lighten uh, beyond what you see now, even though it dries. Some final brush marks to resolve the horizon, and this is the, the finished painting. I went back to it and added a deeper blue to the sky to bring the attention more towards that middle area and uh, perhaps adjust the values to make that center of interest a little more powerful. So I hope this was not only entertaining, but educational, and that you understand tonal values a little better and can use them with a little more confidence.